What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Mastrop Dogtooth. Uh, this is a design by a gentleman who goes by the name of Brad Zinker. Uh, he is a custom uh, knife maker based out of Florida and he's a voting member of the Knife Makers Guild. Um, his designs are centered around, um, you know, the just the general idea of of utility and ease of manipulation uh, by the user. So that's something that I really, really appreciate. So that's really, really interesting. Um, these are currently available. We'll get into that here in just a moment. First, we're gonna do the usual measurements. So this is a knife that wants to tilt this way when it's open and it wants to tilt too far forward when it's closed. So it's just gonna be fickle in that way. So I excuse the lighting here. Overall length on the dog tooth, if we can get it to move just slightly that way, there we go. Overall length on this guy is gonna be about seven, not quite, is it, yeah, it's just, just shy of seven and a half inches overall. The actual blade length is gonna be just shy of three and a half, looks to be about 3.4 inches, and the actual cutting edge is gonna be just over three inches. Uh, so this is a, I wouldn't call it a large knife, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a small knife either. It's kind of a medium sized knife, but it does have a light weight uh, design and a small carry profile. We'll get into that here in a sec. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at about 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, the Spider Code Delica. Spider Code Delica is coming in at seven inches overall. So that's a good size comparison. It's a little bit longer than the Spider Code Delica. Uh, kind of has that slim profile, except you don't get the height of the blade on the Delica. So the entire thing is uh, very um, slim and, and just sort of a small carry profile. Uh, I'll give you an example of the action. If you guys watched me unbox this, you'll remember that I commented specifically on exactly how smooth it felt. Uh, a common trait with lightweight knives on bearings is that the, uh, the blade is never really heavy enough to give it a smooth feeling action. It always feels a little bit gritty, like you know, it's just not enough weight to get those bearings to move. But on this knife, especially when you move that lock bar out of the way, it just wants to fall and then it just needs a, a little bit of a wiggle to get it down in a place. The action is very smooth, very snappy, not a, not a uh, prolific um, flipper tab. You know, it's just barely sticking up there, but it is enough to work in coordination with the detent uh, and the position of the pivot to, to really get it to fly out when you flip. So that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy. Turn on. All right, overall weight coming in at 2.43 ounces. Let's go again on the other side. 2.43 ounces, so under two and a half ounces, which is excellent and expected for this size of knife. That's really, really good. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, anatomy of this. This has got uh, some really interesting features. What we have here, if I remember correctly, this is a signature teardrop worn cliff. Uh, multi-beveled or compound ground teardrop Warncliffe design that is of his, his own design, I guess. Um, very interesting blade shape. A lot of different lines going on. You've got a swedge up here. You've got a flat here. You've got uh, more of a, it's got a, a steeper drop here and then more of a shallow uh, drop that starts way up high. So I would imagine specifically this part of the edge um, gets very, very thin. Did I say that correctly? Shallow and, and steep. Uh, I don't know. I think you guys understand where I'm going with that. Uh, this blade is made out of S35VN steel. I don't know if it actually... Oh, yeah, it says right there on the front. Uh, this is uh, S35VN steel, so of course, great. I love S35VN. It's one of my favorite steels ever, um, so I'm very happy with that. Moving down to the scales, what we have here are nicely contoured and just ever so slightly contoured smooth carbon fiber scales. They do look nice. Uh, not, you know, not the, the most insane or striking carbon fiber I've ever seen, but it is certainly, it does certainly appear to be solid carbon fiber all the way through. And it looks really, really nice on the outside. So I'm really happy with that. Nice, simple button head pivot torque head, uh, torque head, sorry. And then you've got flat handle screws. Um, which I think looks nice up against the carbon fiber just down here on the body. Um, those actually screw into titanium liners. 
nice thick titanium liners for the size of the knife. You do have a couple of standoffs back here. I, I enjoy that. Moving on to the other side, it does mirror much the front, except you have a really nice, just a really nice sort of heavy stone washed spoon shaped deep carry clip. Now this bill does stick up a little bit. That creates a little bit of an issue or will create a little bit of an issue with it snagging on things. But in terms of getting it in and out of your pocket, this is a design that I really like. You can see the screws are recessed into um, the base of the pocket clip so they're not sticking up and your pants aren't going to you know, snag on them as you're going in and out. This thing just, it goes right over the seam of your pants. It goes right up to the top of this every time. In and out, one hand, no problem. Love that pocket clip design. Absolutely love it. Um, I will say this, uh, well actually let's talk about fit and finish here with the centering and lockup. Lockup's coming in at about 35, 40%, something like that. Centering is dead on, that's great. Lockup is solid, no blade play up, down, left, and right, which is always a pleasure to feel on such a light knife because it feels like, it always feels like it's a little bit easier to kind of, you know, torque on, like you, you can really torque on it and get some, uh, get some movement, but not on this knife, you know, nothing there. Like I said, it does run on bearings, and what was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh yeah, uh, there is meaningful jimping up here on the blade. I will say I can get my whole hand all the way around there. There's a little tiny bit of a choke up position. I wouldn't risk it. You're gonna run your finger up on the blade. You can if you want to though. And the jimping does actually catch your finger, so it is functional. Um, so really, really good all the way around. Honestly, I mean, looking all the way around this knife, by the way, just so you guys know, there is no lock bar insert. Something I do appreciate is this cutout here, which allows a little bit of extra room for your finger to get in there and catch that jimping that's on the, um, the liner. Uh, that's really nice. It's easy to access and get, um, you know, get it to move out of the way. It makes this knife really, really easy to manipulate with, um, with one hand, and I appreciate that. You can flip this knife and fidget with it all day long. Nothing's gonna get sore, nothing's gonna get si tired. The detent is a light detent, but it works really, really well with the knife. There's a nice landing zone for your finger. It's comfortable to disengage. I mean, this is just a great fidget knife, and it's very pleasing to the eye with that odd, um, that odd grind. Um, if there's one critique I'd give it, it's that these corners here are just a little bit sharp. They probably could have been rounded just a little bit, but it's not sharp and like a, this knife might become uncomfortable uh, over time way. I mean, may, maybe if you were going to cut for it, you know, with it for hours on end, but this isn't the type of knife that I really feel like um, you'd be doing that with. In fact, I'm going to say one of my cliche lines. This knife, I think, is more of a uh, an office carry knife. This is a nice lightweight design. While it is a, you know, yeah, tactical uh, titanium liner lock flipper on bearings, it is smaller, it is lighter, it's going to carry uh, in a way that doesn't take up a lot of room in your pocket. It's just, it's going to be better suited than a lot of larger knives like the PM2 or the uh, Benchmade Griptilian for office carry because it sinks all the way into your pants and it's light and you don't really notice it. You know, this is more of a jeans knife. This is more of a khakis knife is what I mean by that. <laughs> just to clarify, falling victim to my own cliches right after doing uh, that video on the weekend. But uh, honestly, I really like that. Now, let's talk about compound, or in this case, what they call a double bevel grind. The idea is, is you get two different grinds, and while I'm not, I'm sure there is an advantage maybe in camp knives, maybe when you're making, I would imagine like you would use a fixed blade, or a, I guess it doesn't have to be a fixed blade, it'd be a blade of any time. And this is just my thoughts on this, where if you have one part of the knife that's more shallow, or it's a hollow ground instead of a flat ground, then you know, back here, in that case, the more uh, shallow part of the hollow ground could be used to make like kindling for a fire. And then up here, maybe you'd have a flat ground part where you could use for batoning or more heavy duty chopping or something like that. That makes sense to me. I'm not sure what the benefits are on a compound blade on a folding knife and where the more shallow or the one that comes to a thinner edge is up front. I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason for it beyond aesthetics, but as far as for me, it just looks really nice. This looks appealing to me. I don't know that anybody's really going to gain a whole lot in terms of utility there, but it's also, I can't fault it. It's not like it's taking away from the potential of the knife. You know, there's no thumb stud or hole or anything to get in the way or collect gunk from cuts. You know, the entire thing is, is metal and uh, I would imagine that it cuts really, really well. You do have a very, very fine tip on this guy. You can see there, that is quite the splinter getter. Uh, the one that I always compare to is the P2 
PM2, you can see there, it's really about as thin as the PM2 tip. So not the type of tip you want to be digging into stuff and prying with, but I really not, I really like a, uh, a nice worn cliff, cliff. And this one with the double bevels really adds that nice, you know, luxury, dressy kind of exotic look to it. If not a little bit wicked, you know, it kind of does look like a dog tooth, <laughs> which is obviously where, uh, where it gets its name. Um, overall, I think this is an excellent knife. Like I said, you can get this knife right now in a lot of different variants. Um, there's different color G10, there's black washed blades. Um, uh, this obviously this carbon fiber version. Um, there's also a titanium version, like the whole thing's titanium. It's got a bunch of holes in the frame for uh, milled out for, for weight reduction. Um, from what I've seen, it looks like these are running between 120 and $130, I think. Uh, I've gotten some of that wrong in the past. You know, the different variants cost a lot more or sometimes cost a lot less. That's what I'm seeing. Um, at 120, 130 bucks. Oh my gosh, that's an excellent price all day. This is a simple, lightweight, easy to carry design that's made with premium materials. Um, and it's got a blade shape that, while it is a little bit decorative in my opinion, or a little bit embellished for, for no obvious reason, it certainly does, you know, is a utilitarian blade shape. I mean, for what I would use this for, which is opening letters, opening boxes, opening, you know, packages, cutting through tape, cutting through maybe some, some string or some rope or, you know, regular EDC stuff. Yes, it's going to function just fine. And it's going to function like a tool that you don't really have to think about. You know, you pull it out of your pocket. It's going to pull out. You want it to flip. It's going to flip. Cut. It's going to cut. And you put it away. It's easy. Everything is in the right place. And it's nice. This knife is absolutely uh, a knife that I can recommend. It will go on my list of my most recommended knives. Um, this is just a really, really nice, simple design. And I, I honestly like it a lot. This is really cool. Um, this knife was provided to me by the Pass Run Group. Um, so it, it did come originally from the manufacturer. Just wanted to disclose that. I Sometimes I forget about doing that at the beginning of the episode. But I, you know, I, in my in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I unboxed it and I said it in the unboxing, so that counts. But I, I do need to make sure and remember to say it, stuff like that um, uh, on the actual episode or the review. So um, anyways, I appreciate the opportunity, as always, to uh, take a look at this. But uh, uh, yeah, this knife is definitely going to come recommended by me. So anyways, guys, short little review today, which is abnormal for me. But sometimes when a knife is just straightforward good, it's uh, it's easy for me to do. So if you enjoyed this video please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other videos, I do of course have lots of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.